landscape, and aerial perspective. Like aerial perspective in the sky and atmosphere, it also affects what we see in a painting to give us the effect of distance. We'll show you how to get that as we work on this painting. If you'd like to learn more about oil painting as you create for contentment, be sure and click the subscribe button and hit the little notification bell so that you get notified every time we upload a video to help you produce oil paintings like this. We're going to put some rocks back here. And so it's going to take kind of a blue tint to it, but at the same time it's going to be more pale. So we're going to use a little bit of the uh, Naples yellow. I'm going to grab just a tiny bit of raw umber to mix in with this little bit of blue I have here. I'm just going to bring the paint in just a little bit at a time here. Remember this is kind of off in the distance. So it's going to be more pale, more of a bluish hue to it as it comes down. And we're going to make this one a little bit wider here and just a hair darker now these rock formations these table lands these mesas as they're known as one thing that most people don't understand is that this they'll see these like ramps at the bottom of them and what those ramps are is as these rocks have fallen off of this cliff, they've landed down here. And that's what, as they call, the, they create kind of a landslide of the, as the stuff comes off and then it just slides down. And it's built up over time, and that's what's causing these land ramps at the bottom of these mesas. They were actually straight walls all the way up at one time, but erosion and everything brought them down to where we see them with the bases the way we see them today. Now I'm going to take a little tiny bit of raw umber and what we're going to do is we're going to come in here we're just going to kind of add a little bit of shadowing in here to this down here so you can still see the other color behind it is still kind of pale but now you can see a little more definition of the rocks that have come down and we'll put some texture in these back here and as we go on but for now we just want to kind of put those in in there and we're going to take a little bit of that naples yellow and a little bit of the raw sienna now and we're just going to kind of make a kind of a ground surface thing. that just blends our 
I still got too much moisture in that brush. And that's why Bob Ross, you always see him beating his brushes on the, his easel. He's down here doing this. That's what he's doing. He's knocking that paint thinner out of his brushes. And if you're in the right kind of studio, you can do that. I guess that would work. And I had a little bucket with a screen in it to do just that, but I don't know what I've done with it recently. So I'm going to have to do it a little different here. Kind of liven things up a little bit. And that's basically gives us something to blend into here. And then we can use our blending brush for that. Just kind of blend these edges together a little bit here. And then that kind of will plateau off. We'll, we'll see some more of that later. But for now, we're just going to kind of let that go. And we're going to work on, we're going to put us another one kind of right here in the center. And this will be our, more or less our focal. So we've done the sky, now we're doing the rock formations in the back and in the front and the foreground. So this one is going to take up a good part of the painting. I'm going to reach over here and grab a little bit more of this front on the, grab some more of this raw sienna. And we're just going to keep adding. And right now we're just working on getting the, our base color in for our rock formation. These are, they may not all be flat. They may, some of them may be a little more. But for the most part, they're pretty flat, pretty even on height. You notice I'm interspersing the color in there. It's not all brown and it's not all. I'm deliberately layering my colors to get the effect I want in here. I'm going to just go ahead and do this real fast. You can rewind and catch up here as you need. We're going to get this blocked in for you real quick here. So we can take you to the next step in making these rocks. Now 
This particular brush I'm using is uh, hog's hair bristle. And that's why you'll see that you're seeing the line textures in it. And that's, I want those there on purpose. That's the reason I'm using this type of brush. I want, and we'll go over here. And we're going to add a point of interest to this at the front here now. Because I'm sure we've seen at least pictures where it's, you've seen them to where they erode it out and they leave this spire off to one side of the formation. And sometimes the spire will have started eroding itself a little bit. So we may see even a little finger of the spire off on another side of it. And kind of an odd little break off point. All right, we got that in. We're going to go in and add a little bit of our light brown, the raw sienna, and the maple yellow too. And I'm going to use a little bit of burn number this time because I want a little bit of a different effect for this formation. And we're going to put that in just like that. You notice I still got those lines though. I'm still working on keeping those lines in there. And I'll show you why here as we progress on. And that it will really make painting this type of formation simple for you once you understand the benefit of having those lines in there, and those breaks and the brush strokes. And it, don't worry about a straight line because in nature there very rarely are any straight lines. They're just kind of there and they you might see different coloration here and there. And the colors aren't going to be even 
if you get a off to the side like that, don't worry about it. We can just make it part of our base as we go along here. In this particular area of the country, the ground's not really, a lot of it's red, a lot of it's sand. There's a lot of different color variation in the soil around the area. And part of that is due to whatever these particular monuments are made of. Some of them are heavy in iron, some of them are heavy in lime. And they just vary. So the base will be a lot of times a different color than the rock up here, even. And that's okay. Remember, you've got artist license, artistic license working in your favor, too. So you can take liberties to a certain degree. As long as you get your expression across, that's the main thing. You slowly put in your base. Get it kind of the shading you want it. And we'll show you how to add some quick texture to this for your rocks and everything here in a little bit. And add a little bit more. Uh, I'm going to put the gel on the raw sienna, mix them together as we fade off on the bottom of our spire here. And fill in our ground cover base color while we're at it. A little bit of my paint thinner here, and add a little bit of the blue, just kind of insinuate that into the painting a little bit and into the ground. Now, you can use a large brush for your ground cover here. In fact, I'm going to switch to one right now. And as you can see, there's still brush strokes in the painting because this, even though this is a large brush, it's not synthetic. It's actually animal hair. I think this particular one is from horse's tail, if I remember right. And it's designed for oil paints.
It's actually a house painting brush. We're gonna blend this together here. Remember I told you about this back here earlier fading on us. Because of the sky and atmospheric distortion. Now you can see we can bring it all the way out to this edge over here. And tie it in to where it looks like the background properly. Of this area immediately in front of us. So we'll grab just a little bit of this and blend it up into the yellow. back to our, large, our smaller brush finish blending that in there Kind of a shadow line, slowly blends it all together. We'll just add a little bit over here. some excess paint off the brush. Dark on the edge. 
finished lens work. And there you are. If you liked what you saw today and you want to learn more, be sure and click the subscribe button down below and hit the net bell notification so that you get notified every time we upload a video or go live. And we'll see you next time as we create for contentment. In the meantime, you be sure and have fun.